Oh, Kairi Nasan, Minasan. Today we are gonna talk about Kamen Rider Geese episode 9. This episode is really, really amazing. I really enjoy the entirety of the first episode until episode 9. The first arc has been completed, the chance encounter. Next episode, we are gonna start a new arc of the season and it is gonna be really, really amazing. But we are here to talk about what do we actually learn from episode 9. The first thing that we learn is that the Jamato actually evolve over time, if they are being left alive for too long, they are gonna evolve and evolve and evolve again. So this, I would say, this actually give me a, another theory of where does the Jamato could actually come from, okay? Because the game changed from kick the can into something else, from kicking the can to destroying the can. So the Jamato actually have the ability to evolve. And I know I am also part of the problem that I actually spread the idea that what if the Jamato is actually created by the DGP itself? They are behind everything they, they created their own crisis so that they they can create the hero to save the save the people from the crisis itself but like i i want to kind of like twist the idea and twist this theory a little bit rather than dgp themselves is actually responsible for for the how do i say the destruction or, or not not for the destruction for the creation of the jamato but what if they back in the day in the dgp it was not actually a a rider versus jamato fight but it is actually the gladiator arena it is the colosseum like the strongest the last man standing is actually gonna win the dgp and you you're gonna get your wish granted okay so this is based on the idea of when you become the gladiator of the colosseum like because back in the day when they fight in the colosseum all, most of them are slave okay but when you become the winner the champion gladiator you actually can get one wish or you can actually got your slave title removed from you and you officially become one of the citizens of roman so what if back in the day the dgp is actually the gladiator fight but now that one back in the day one of the winner of the dgp actually wishes for a monster to fight rather than fighting with other people what if they wish for jamato to exist and in like like what we saw in this episode the game master has no right to to kind of like reject the wishes of the winner itself so no matter what the, the the winner wishes for they have to answer the prayer they have to answer the wishes of the winner the desired deity something like that so what if back in the day there is like with one winner that wishes for the jamato to appear so that he can fight with monsters something like that and that is how the jamato actually start to exist starts to born from the dgp itself so that is just my idea my my a little bit of theory that i want to throw out there for all of you guys to help me brainstorm and to build upon this theory okay so let me know in the comment section below what do you think about this theory and let me know is it legitimate like it can can it be real or something like that and the next thing we want to talk about is the game master he actually appears in front of the rider and I, I am not happy okay i am really really not happy that they actually reveal the game master to be giroli i, I feel like everyone already have kind of like the a hint like, or kind of like a a inkling that it could actually be giroli but a lot of us just doesn't want to admit that it could actually be giroli like most of us say that like it is too obvious and that it is giroli so most of us just denies the idea that he is actually giroli but at the final at the final scene of this episode we actually get to see the game master taking off the mask and revealing himself to be giroli that is very very disappointing but then again what can I say? Okay, what can I say? So really interesting stuff here is that 
the game master actually is interested to see what type of war that S is gonna create like moving forward like what is the war that he's actually looking for and this actually makes me think that hey maybe the game master itself like is serving more of a neutral position like he is neither good nor evil just think about dj sakada i i, I forgot what is his name already the kamen rider dj i kamen rider gaim dj the one that is in the the city itself the, the one that is like doing the dj and turns out at the end of the day he he be, he is actually one of the the messenger or kind of like the observer of the the ascension of king something like that so what if the dgp game master is also serving a similar role like dj i forgot what is his name already but he's that like that dj like he is actually looking for like looking for someone to create a war and and he's just excited that to see what type of war s is gonna create moving forward so that is why we see that he is paying close attention to S. Every single thing that S do, he's like a fanboy. Okay, he's like the watcher. Like he, he enjoys watching S. Something like that. So that is really really interesting stuff. The next thing I just want to talk about is how cute the female character or female actress actually is in this episode. I really love Sumuri in this episode. Like she is like super adorable. Like her facial expression, how she like kind of like squat over to the egg and like poke the egg i was like oh damn she 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 stole my heart just from that simple feel action that she did and like when when they announced the winner of the dgp she stroll around wow that is like absolutely adorable like we actually get to see more personality from S itself and that is insane okay, I really did not expect to see this another thing that is really cute is obviously Nago like Nago is super cute as well in this episode like how she uses the propeller and how she's like using the egg and all those stuff like just full on cute okay but another thing that I really love is how Nago understood the 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 intensity and and the the seriousness and the danger that is in the final fight the final round of the dgp itself like she actually record a video to to say goodbye this might be the end for me but she understood it okay like she knows the danger and she still decide decide to move on and and to pursue what what she really wants in life that is amazing and really really respectable so the next thing we actually need to talk about is how azuma is seeing toru all around the place like what the hell is that okay like what is going on here like is buffa really that how do i say it? like when, when when you are able to talk to a dead guy what what does what does that make you depressed or, or maybe like you are in you are actually in an escape or something like that i don't know man but azuma is looking for revenge and i do not know why his revenge target turns out to be him like it turns out to be s i really do not understand that but really in interesting stuff but this is something else again okay? in this episode we actually get to see as showing quite a lot of emotion like he is actually nervous for once but when he when his act doesn't hatch she he is nervous despite putting up a front like how confident he is but he is worried he is absolutely worried about like how is he gonna win how how the act why does the act is not hatch at all he i would say he kind of like gave up at the end and that is why at the end of the day he actually gave thanks to Buffa for showing him the value of tenacity like the, the value of not giving up and just resilient all the way and, and even though it sounds a little bit insulting but that is how S show his gratitude okay S is a sundere man like S is a freaking sundere fight me in the comment section below if you disagree with me but i just have to say he is a sundere and his justice is very weird okay like he defended buffa but at the same time he is also he the way he he helped people is full of ego like how rich people or how 
famous people will actually help people. It's like, hey, just don't don't do this stupid shit. Like, leave everything up to me. I'm just gonna help you do this. Like, you're not worthy. Like, why why are you wasting your time? Just leave it to the pro, something like that. That is how ass talks, okay? And for some reason, it it didn't mind me at all. I, I felt like it actually showed him to be quite a funny character when you actually understood that he is actually quite a nice guy, but he just maybe he's awkwardly so socially awkward, okay? Like you you think that he is like the stars of the stars of the stars, but I would say he could actually be aw socially awkward, like the way how he interact with Nago and how he interact with like Sumori itself, like he doesn't seem to be a playboy, he doesn't seem to be the confident type of guy. So I would I would I would argue that he is socially awkward, and that is why every time he talks, he seems a little bit condescending to other people when he doesn't even mean to do that. So that is really, really interesting stuff, okay? But another big thing that I really did not expect to see in this episode is the revelation that Punk Jack actually is a real human. I mean like it obviously there's someone behind Punk Jack itself but I really didn't expect to see him talk in this episode and in the next episode we're gonna get, we're, we're gonna meet him in a new season of the DGP itself and turns out his name is gonna be Hallelujah Win so it is a, a word of play for Halloween, okay? So they basically call him Hallelujah Win. I do not know why this is the case, but this is interesting as well. Like this is kind of like a, uh, they, he debuted in October, which is the month of Halloween. So I'm really excited to see who, what, what rider is going to get introduced in the month of November and also December. A lot of people are actually speculating that the, in the month of November, it is gonna be a turkey rider because it is thanks Thanksgiving. And then in December, we're gonna get a reindeer or, or an elk rider because it is the month of Christmas. And maybe next year, new year, we're gonna get a, a new new rider with a ra rabbit best rider because the Luna Chinese the Chinese Luna calendar zodiac sign is rabbit next year okay hey, hey, is it rabbit no not rabbit maybe like, I, I'm not so sure, sure man like I'm Chinese but I don't care about the zodiac okay so really really amazing stuff here I also love this episode we actually get to see Bafa Horn got broken, his his eyes got cracked. That is something that we don't get to see often in the Kamen Rider series nowadays when they actually brought the rider mask and destroy the rider mask itself and the rider continue to fight. We don't get to see that quite often nowadays. I I think because it, it, it would actually take quite a lot of money to do that. And it just to make another broken helmet that you only use once is a little bit waste of money, okay? So really, really interesting that they actually show us like how Bafa Horn got broken and his mask actually broke a little bit. So really amazing stuff. But the biggest thing right now that I believe all of us are questioning is what the hell did S Ukiyo actually wish for this time? The last time we actually know that he wishes to be the stars of the stars of the stars. And now what did he actually wish for? And what changes actually causes Sumori to not want to grant his wish at all. Like this is really, really interesting because Sumori is the one that is kind of like rejecting the, 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 the wishes of S, but the game master is very intrigued to see what S is gonna do to this war itself. So Sumori doesn't seem like a bad guy, doesn't seem like a bad lady. So I'm really, really curious on what S actually wished for. Maybe he wished that more participants of the DGP, or maybe he wished for another round of DGP. I don't know, man. Like it is really, really crazy, man. Like anything could happen. And in order to know what he really wished for, we really need to watch the next episode and hopefully we get to meet Kewa once again because in the next episode preview we don't see Tycoon anyway we don't see Kewa any anywhere man but we do actually get to hear his voice if not mistaken that is his voice okay like 
why are you here? Something like that. Punk Jack, something like that. I felt like that is his voice in the preview itself. Let me know in the comment section below whose voice is it exactly. For me, I, I think it is... I think it is Kewa, okay? Kewa, please come back. You are in the opening song, though. You are important to the story. Don't, don't, don't go missing on us. But I have sad news for all of you right now, and that is next week, we are not gonna have episode 10 of Kamen Rider Gears because they are gonna have a break due to a celebration in Japan. They are gonna have a special TV program that is gonna replace the screening of Kamen Rider Gears episode 10. So the next episode is gonna come out on the 13th of November, if not mistaken, if my calculation is correct. Yes, 13th of November is gonna be the release of episode 10. So we are gonna have a break next, next week, but that doesn't mean that this is the end of the channel itself, okay? We're, we're, we're gonna definitely cover a few more stuff in yeah, next week. Definitely gonna talk more about the preview that we got next week. And we, we're gonna see Nag Nago in beat form. We're gonna see Hallelujah win. And we are gonna see two new rider that has been teased to us, like the White Mary and also Kamen Rider Kero, like the, the Owl Kamen Rider. So really amazing stuff. But yep, that is all from me. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you made it this far into the video and you are still watching, I want you to comment well in the comment section below. W H A L. Why? Because Kujira Kamen Rider, I really want to see it happen. After watching Black Sun, I kind of like want to see a well Kamen Rider in Gears itself. So that is all from me. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what you see, how about you hand that red button into a gray button and I'll be seeing you guys on the next one. Goodbye.